So in early 2016, I programmed a wonderful feature that could actually take down all of Netflix in a very few set of requests. Of course, this was passed by many people, a lot of eyes saw it and said, That's a great idea! Well, it wasn't. I'm gonna tell you a story about how I could write a simple little script and take down all of Netflix. Of course, this was such an awesome bug that we did create a super cool icon for it, and it made it into the Netflix block. Now, I've talked a lot about working at Netflix, and this, of course, is the Falcor project, in which I'm still contributor number one and of course my contribution days were in 2015 to 2016 there's some inside code that uh you can't see anymore that i also contributed to and that's really where the bug exists so before i can tell you how this bug exists i first have to kind of explain basically falcor so falcor works on this idea of paths you'd give it an array of strings and numbers and it'd go and request the data so here's a simple example i would simply provide say foo bar baz and the server would respond with an object kind of like this. Realistically, it would look something more like a video one, two, three uh, bar, and it would return back something that looked like that. Of course, then I could request video one, two, three bar again, and we would just get the data out of the cache instead of go requesting on the server. I know, sounds a little bit like GraphQL. Yes, we did talk to them way back in the 2016, 2015 days, discussed caching strategies, async, all the fun stuff. And we both came to the very simple conclusion that cache invalidation, very, very simple. So this seems really clever. This seems really good, but you know what? What's the, what's the problem that always happens? You never just need one piece of data, right? You kind of have, okay. Hey, thanks for the follow on Twitch. I appreciate that, okay? But I'm telling a story. Let's calm it down a little bit. So, of course, the real problem is that you kind of treat this like RPC, but you want the caching of REST. So, you want to be able to request a lot of things at once. So, I don't just request video by some ID. I want to request a list of videos. What happened if I want to request a list of list of videos? What happened if in 1999, all you shipped was DVDs which had movies on them? Well, that thing would be called a list of list of movies or a Lolomo. Yes, that is literally what we call this thing to this day, the Lolomo. Despite, I don't think there's actually a single single movie on my current Lolomo, but it's still a list of list of movies. So yes, I want to be able to request everything that I see right now in this picture, and then I want to be able to render it all. So what would the request look like for this? Well, as you can see, there's six across my screen. And so I'm going to want to, you know, request a little extra on the outside. There's three rows. So the request would look a little something like this, which of course produces a ton of information right here, right? I just requested Lolomo 0 through 4, 0 through 7 image. There we go. I got this nice little beautiful graph in which I have a little bit of extra on each side. So if I decided to scroll a little bit, we'd have a little bit extra underneath. Boots, as we like to call it. Anywho, there's like this whole problem with caching, right? You know, I was obviously just requesting video 1, 2, 3 title. Well, what happened if my video doesn't have title? Okay, well, that obviously they all have titles. Let's take a different field. How about bookmark? Videos, one, two, three, bookmark. Oh no, I've never seen the show before. There is no bookmark. What should I report back from the server? Should I say that videos one, two, three doesn't exist? Or is it videos one, two, three, bookmark that doesn't exist? Well, my server has to have the knowledge of everything that has happened, which makes it kind of complicated. So we came up with this idea of materialize. Materialize would simply take the entire path and create the proper cache object and send it back down. That way, in case my backend goes, oh, well, I actually do have title, it could handily just insert a title into the graph and everything would be fine. And of course, I would know on my side, hey, bookmark doesn't exist. Oh, but look, title does exist. Awesome. I'll get that out and I'll display it. Cache invalidation, such a simple problem. So let's go back in here and let me show you a little bit of the problem. Well, remember, our server takes this data, JSON stringifies it, and then hands it to our client. Our client JSON parses it and then puts it into the cache. Client, not a problem, right? If we send too much data down and they explode, nobody cares. But what happened if our server explodes? Well, I got this idea. I thought, okay, what happened if I just request the entire Lolomo, right? They can be somewhere between this, right? Boom, it'd be huge, right? And if I pipe this into, say, uh, our line counter, there's 18,000 lines right here. Obviously, it wouldn't be pretty printed, but nonetheless, it could be pretty dang big. So then I thought, well, with materialize, I could make this thing like really big right i could just who cares right so what would happen then as you can see nothing's happening and why is nothing happening that's because this thing is just crunching some stupid object indefinitely because it's entirely too big until eventually it would run out of data or run out of ram and it would explode. We weren't using Node back then, we were using Java, well, specifically Groovy, because it's Groovy, baby. And yes, 
that would happen in Groovy as well. So then I thought maybe I could just take down all of Netflix with this one simple trick. So I went to netflix.com slash browse. At that point, Netflix will autoplay some nonsense because I actually also wrote this feature. I am very, very sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm going to give you this opportunity to press the like button. Maybe even tickle that sub button, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so weird. Anywho, I opened up the inspector, searched up path evaluator, clicked on one of the path evaluators, copied it as curl, went back to my terminal, opened up node, encoded my path syntax, created a script, pasted in the information. Yes, I am going to hide all my information because you dirty dogs are going to try to do something with it, okay? I'm tired of doxing myself. Went back to node and printed out A, copied, edited my path to include all the relevant items, saved it, chamoded it, and curled it. Of course, at that point, when I executed curl before, it would actually just do nothing, and it would sit there for an incredibly long time, and eventually that instance, which I ended up tracing, would just disappear. So I thought, hey, I could put a while loop. I mean, I know how to do it. I could, I could script kitty. I use NeoVim. I could do this. And I did. And there went the entirety of all the things, and eventually started getting emails complaining about staging being slow, unresponsive, or not available. And then, of course, other people were, you know, responding, oh my goodness, things are going down. That's when I knew for a fact. I destroyed Netflix. I destroyed it. So, of course, what did I do next? I continued to take down staging for another couple hours just to really prove that I could just really do it. And then I wrote off some pretty important email stating, oh my goodness, Falcor could destroy the universe. Ultimately, this and many other reasons, the Falcor project just never ended up taking off nearly as far as I think it could have. It, you know, of course, like all things, it, you know, it's a neat idea. It seemed really great on paper. But man, was it just so hard to make this. And obviously, I made a bug so bad that you could literally just stop Netflix from existing. Luckily, after years of effort, we got every last part of it gone, and it did take quite a bit of effort to fix the problem. And lastly, Netflix eventually phased out Falcor. I no longer work on it, haven't worked on it in half a decade at this point. Oh boy, were those the days. And that, of course, is how I both destroyed and saved Netflix. Remember this article that I showed you, which they actually go in detail explaining exactly how you could take down Netflix, including exactly where to copy all their curl requests and everything from? Well, this was written in 2017 and it turns out I actually found a follow-up bug in which I could still take down all of Netflix in 2018. They didn't even get it all fixed before the article came out. It's so easy!